And now, please welcome your hosts, Amy and Trey Castles. Hey everyone, it's Amy Castles. What up, it's Trey. Trey's drinking his wake up water. It's coffee. Why you gotta call it something different? Because you just told me that oh. new term. I guess you just learned that from John. Yeah, John taught me wake up coffee. Wake, wake up, up water. water. Yeah. Wake up water. I need some wake up water. Yeah, you do. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about some updates on life. Hmm. Where do you want to start? Well, for one, we have a new hustle. Hmm. There's a new there's a new hustle in life. And it's called the economy sucks. <laughs> And I feel like there's multiple ways that you can look at it. You can complain. You can get really upset and post on Facebook and then just get all the comments to stir the energy of the fact that the economy sucks and our bread is now like seven bucks. Or it's the land of opportunity. We can work a little harder, spend less, be mindful and intentional with our monies. I like that. Um, I think we have a choice. Have we started doing that yet? I know, right? Listen, I'm talking to myself here. <laughs> uh, we, if you're listening, we're not perfect. We're talking to ourselves. This is for our future reference where we can go back and listen to our podcast and say, hey, remember that one time? We're going to start Monday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, but we seriously do need to start this We, we actually do need to start on Monday. We've been on vacation and out of town. And, it's time. Yeah. Um, no, I really... For me, this has put kind of like a fire under my butt. I think that it's very easy to just wallow in it and be upset, but I feel I feel like we can go um, go differently and be uh, grateful for the opportunities that we have. So, okay, um, Trey is doing a little bit more work. In his company, he's always worked on the company. Well, for many years, for many years, you were in the grind. You were building it, and then you got to a certain point. Sixteen to twenty, we we were in build mode. Yeah. Um, twenty one, twenty two, we were we were enjoying what we built. <laughs> life was life is good. It wasn't was life is good. And leading the leaders um, that you've trained and 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 bringing with. up and developing the people that you know were. Um, cultivating the company to be where it's at. They now have new roles, new positions, and, you know, it allowed us and afforded us to, to just sit back and mentor and consult as opposed to actually get in the field and do. And, uh, you know, when things get slower and things get to um, certain points, you, you want to roll your sleeves back up and get back in there. I think it's good. I think it's good for you. I think it's good for uh, the leaders that you've put into position. I think it... I think it's great all the way around and it puts, it gives it's, you purpose. It's, it's been a lot of, I've, I've been very grateful and humbled actually getting back into the grind, going department to department, getting out in the field, seeing everybody. Um, the, the humbling part of it is, you know, we've got 250 employees and they love our culture. They love our company and, and they're out there grinding for it. And so that makes me want to work harder for them. Um, and find new ways, new paths, make sure that we're always ahead of the curve so we're not getting slapped with it when it comes. We're anticipating it, and we're ahead of it. That's why we're all jumping back in and just looking for new ways to grow. I think we have to do that in our businesses, and we have to do that in our home life too because whatever shifts for you at work also shifts for us at home because we have our, you know, we have our routine. You have your involvement of what you do for your dad duties. I have my mom duties and we have to, we have to make the shift. So your mindset had to change on how you approach what you're going to uh, continue on with doing with work or new position or get back into whatever you had to shift your mindset. And I have to shift my mindset too at home because you're going to be at home less. And the kids are asking last night, where's dad? Where's dad? And I'm like, he's, he's at work. And they're like, it's nine o'clock at night. I'm like, yeah. And this may happen. Well, those are temporary things too. Um, By the know. way, I would appreciate it if you would like text me and say, hey, I'm actually going out to dinner afterwards and then I'm going to be home because I thought you were coming home and uh, I'm like checking clock. Oh, did you want, did you need more communication? Yes, I would. Okay. I'm just well, saying. Thank you for communicating that. Now I can communicate back with you with more communication. Now that we've communicated. Thank you for that communication. 
<laughs> I just thought that would be nice. But anyway, that's a, no, okay. no deal. Well, yeah, I hey, checked your GPS and I was I like, figured, oh, yeah, you're listen, at Longhorn Cafe. I, I was like, I, okay. I don't have a, a, a way of avoiding getting away from you. So it's like, a, um, I don't know, early release prisoner that has the 24-7 surveillance well, on him. Well, so I, they listen, know when and where I don't want to. I don't want to bug you. It's just easier for me to check your GPS and see where you are. And I asked you if you had eaten dinner. You said no. I made chicken, and then I made some um, Alfredo rice pilaf for you, and some broccoli. And you know, I mean, it was sitting out on the counter, um, waiting for you. And then you never came. So I was like. Oh, I checked your location. You but said we did communicate on dinner. You said, are you eating dinner, getting dinner? And I said, yes. No, you said after. Yeah. You, but it was short. It was not really a good communication. Oh. So I'm just saying, like, we're going to have to make some adjustments here because, you know, I made dinner and it was just sitting there. <laughs> and I ate leftovers, so I actually didn't need to make your dinner. But that's okay. You know what? You'll have lunch today. See, that's the bright side. We're going to look at the positives. You have lunch today. Lunch is today is at home for you. You know, if today is about gratitude, I'm, I'm thankful for you, Amy. All right. Well, I'm thankful for you for working so hard and then going to spend it at Longhorn. But that's okay. No. <laughs> just, you know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Moving on. We're rambling. This is how Trey and I communicate. Um, so yeah, anyway, things are going to adjust differently at home. So that means that we have to go back to the drawing board at the house and say, okay, you know, if dad's not going to be there as much, then we need to shift how we do certain chores or some of our routines, which is completely fine. I'm, I love change and change of routine. I think is good. I agree. Okay. That's all I had to say about that. So in other news, I think we talked about this on our last episode, but I'm not sure. We had our wave runners stolen. And someone just backed up into the driveway and hooked up the trailer onto their truck and then took off. Yeah, they left um, two aluminum ramps. So apparently they had the ramps in the back of their truck. They put them down on the ground. I, I don't know. Like they didn't want to rut up my yard or whatever. Well, that, thank you. <laughs> they left them. Thank you, thief. I mean, it, was, it was a very considerate thief. Uh, it turns out the cameras in our neighborhood only catches uh, vehicles coming in the neighborhood, and it's a license plate camera not going out. So when we did the investigation, they couldn't find a vehicle leaving with the wave runners. But um, one of our friends did some extra investigative work and spent some time looking at the last 30 days of any vehicle coming and going that was suspicious. And there was one that only entered the neighborhood on the day that we had the incident at around 12 o'clock and it never showed the vehicle going out and it was a black Chevy that had the wide tires that matched the um the ruts in the yard and it was a blacked out Chevy registered to someone in San Antonio Ooh, and yeah. they couldn't they couldn't do anything in San Antonio because unless I mean they put an APB out on the vehicle but they were looking for the vehicle with the wave runners and if they didn't have the wave runners on the back of it, it doesn't matter. Okay, so can we go back to that whole gratitude thing? Um, so jokes, I'm extremely thankful uh, that they took them. Jokes on them because uh, the life expectancy on those wave runners is very um, minimum, and we will be receiving uh, payment from our insurance company that will supersede the. Value uh, of the value. So yeah, no, it worked out. Um, it worked out good for us. <laughs> We're not complaining. The only thing is, is the feeling of the violation of somebody actually coming into our driveway. To yeah, take that was them. kind of creepy. Um, we've never used the gate in front of our our, our property, and um, Roy from the office has been awesome. He's come in and just taken the thing apart, and what would normally cost us like thirty five hundred bucks to fix, it's a couple parts and some labor. Nice. So we'll have it fixed next week. All right. So here's another um, another news. Uh, on Monday, <laughs> on Monday, Trey's truck was stolen. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. a good one too. Yeah, Actually, so it was it was Tuesday. I feel like we made out on the insurance. Like we're gonna look suspicious. Like, hey, man, this worked out good. Um, how about your truck? You can't make up what <clears throat> I'm about to say. Um, so I pulled into San Antonio to go work with one of my managers down there, and we're. I'm at a Hilton Garden Inn across the street from the airport. I literally park. There's two. Uh, it's a Hilton Garden Inn, so you have the Hilton Honors members, and they have the, the the two parking spots in front that are reserved for Hilton Honors members. Well, I parked right next to that in the front row, um, underneath the American flag pole, underneath a light pole, next to the camera that says 24-hour recording. I couldn't get any closer to that hotel without parking in the lobby. 
And I get up um, Tuesday morning about nine o'clock to go leave. And there was a white Chevy parked where I was at. So I was like, man, that's not my truck. And I went back in and said, uh, you guys have cameras. I think my car's been, my truck's been stolen. And um, they looked up. The cameras weren't 24-7 recording like they said. It was, but it was, again, just a license plate camera. And so they were able to capture my truck leaving the parking lot at um, 525 that morning. And it was gone. And what did the police officer say? Uh, he said, man, he goes, look, at the end of the day, it's hunting season in San Antonio. He goes, more than likely that thing's across the border by now. Um, wait, 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 wait. You said targeting hunting all, season. Yeah, they're targeting I thought trucks. you meant like hunting like deer. Yeah. And I was... Hunters are coming into San Antonio to go out to their leases, and they're coming in and out. And so they have weapons, they have hunting gear, they have all their stuff in their trucks. And so they're targeting trucks for the purpose of getting the loot inside of it whether it be hunting gear or whatever and they're also stealing them oh. and there's a high demand across the border for trucks and so they're stealing them and taking them across the border yeah so where, where was the confusion in that because i thought hunters were stealing trucks i was like but hunters are good country boys they don't steal trucks oh my god you're pretty <laughs> <laughs> I I was really confused about that. I'm glad you shared that. Thank you. Okay. Well, listen, I have my blonde moments. Okay. I do have my blonde moments. So the, 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 the kicker to all of this, it wasn't the truck. I I think we're going to probably make out very well on the truck with insurance. Um, but we were going to trade it in this weekend to get Avery something new. And, um, cause she's turning, well, she's already turned 16, but she's getting her license this week. And now we got to wait till the insurance has to take 14 days to, to see if they find it. And then another seven to 10 to cut a check. So we're probably another 30, 35 days out from having any resolution. That truck uh, is already in Chihuahua, Mexico. Chihuahua. But what's crazy is we had a very long weekend. So I was gone Friday through Tuesday and we did a skeet shoot on Friday. We had Evans tournament skeet, on skeet, Friday. Skeet, skeet. Um, I had a swim run in Austin um, that weekend. So I had all my run gear I took my golf clubs with me to go play with William um, after our event. So I literally had everything in that truck. Um, his whole his whole guy life. Yeah, was in I, that I took truck. my golf clubs. I had my shotguns. I had you know several things in a bag of gear of all my running stuff. I had all my sunglasses. Oh, the worst thing was my clothes. Yeah. So freaking went Wednesday to go to the dry cleaners. Two hundred fifty dollars worth of dry cleaning. We just got back from Scotland. I mean, everything: suits, uh, pants, button ups, Hold work on. shirts. Your little Scotty dog shirt. No, thankfully I I have that. I've already been made fun of on Facebook for that one. So thank you. Um, no, they're all gone. It was like three thousand dollars worth of clothes. I have nothing. Evan's suit was in there. He called me Tuesday and he's like, "Hey, Dad, I got to wear my suit to the game today. And are you going to be here?" And I was like, "Yeah, about that." It's like, I don't have my truck yeah. and your suit was in there. And he was like, oh, come on. Um, so, yeah, little things like that. And then I I went to go yesterday morning to leave for work. And I was just going to wear my boots. And I forgot they were in my truck. So I had to go up and change because I didn't have boots to wear. <laughs> it's like, dude, everything was in there. So we'll see. Um, it took... Uh, took about 10 hours for me to get home that day because I didn't have my driver's license. I didn't have credit cards. They were in my golf bag. Wait, so, credit cards were in your golf bag? Yeah, so everything's gone. Did so you I, Hold on. Did you cancel those? <clears throat> yeah, I'm doing all that right now. Um, so, yeah, it was a pain oh in the ass because I couldn't get home. So I'd, I'd Ubered from the hotel to the office, stood at the office for a couple hours, got in all the insurance done, then called the insurance. They wouldn't let me rent a car without a driver's license. And so I went down to the DMV, then San Antonio, and it's appointment only. And they didn't have appointments until March. And I'm like, well, maybe I can just sneak in. And they did looked at me like I was the plague. So um, Reggie up at work has a membership with Vaughn Lane. And so he hooked me up with a, a ride home. I went to the Marriott in downtown San Antonio. It takes you to the Galleria in Houston. It's a luxury van line. It's actually pretty cool. I had a How much would reclining that? seat, and they came and brought wow. drinks. I had a couple Jack and Cokes and had uh, dinner and snacks. It was a great way to come home. Oh, you had a couple of Jack and Cokes. Let's oh, talk I was about definitely that. drinking that day. Yeah, for sure. I had yeah, a Trey's steak. looking and, swole right now. Hey, he is swole. Your truck gets stolen. You're going to put some 
some numbing juice down. <laughs> numbing juice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So, yeah, I got home about, and then I Ubered home from the Galleria. I got home about 1 o'clock that morning. Yeah, and you know what sucks for, Yesterday morning. for <laughs> us is that we just went shopping and got Avery some really cool thrift shop clothes. Oh, yeah, all her stuff and was in there, all too. their stuff. And then she was like, these jeans fit me so good. And because we got them at thrift shop, we have no idea what the brand was. And it's so hard to find her. Jeans, Dude, my truck was loaded. I know down. it was loaded down. That's why I parked in the front. It's like I'm not hauling all this crap in the hotel. Literally, have to get a buggy and a cart. To be oh, and there. there was a gun in there too. Yeah, like, I lost shotgun. Yeah, shotgun. Um, so anyway, yeah, we um, we can. So so that was in San Antonio. You were on your way to kind of the San Antonio Austin area when you had your incident. So between our wave runners, your truck, and mine, we have we're both in rentals. Mm-hmm. Waiting on insurance checks, um, and waiting on basically three vehicles to get taken care of because we got to get Avery something. Maybe we should buy a lottery ticket because we're just getting so lucky right now with many different things. Maybe we should buy a lottery ticket. I think that we're done because it comes in waves, and we had the wave runner, your truck, and mine. So if it's done in threes, we're on the we're on the good side of this. Yeah. Well. All right. Well, that was. Um, a very wonderful story, and we're moving on. It was a very long story, a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. It was good. Wow. It was Are good. you not grateful for <laughs> my story? No, I am, and I'm. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm really glad that we're staying positive through all of this and and just laughing about it. Um, I I feel thankful that we do have the opportunity to laugh because there are a lot of people who don't have insurance, and uh, we're. We're very fortunate that we were well, able to have the insurance manager to cover that it. I was down there to see mm-hmm. six weeks ago had his car stolen and he has a Hyundai. And so there's this thing going around YouTube where they would go and break into these Hondas and then drop the steering column, plug in this USB port or whatever, and it would start. And so these kids were stealing Hondas, joyriding around till they run out of gas and then leaving them on the side of the road. And so William, he was so thankful because for whatever reason, his his insurance had lapsed and he had had an issue trying to get that figured out. And so he was kind of dead to rights, no car, still owed money on it. And insurance was battling that it was expired versus not. And he didn't know what to do. Well, six days later, the car shows up out of gas on the side of the road, smelling like bleach. So they bleached the inside, wiped it down, left it, not a scratch on it. It was fine. He got it back. But it's it, not like bleach. It's not like bleach because they wiped it down. It's toxic. Oh, I would rather have my toxic car back than not. Yeah, by the way, so Trey's truck, <clears throat> the gas gauge was broken, so or the fuel gauge was broken. So uh, Trey actually had just run out of gas on Friday and had to walk down the feeder of I-45 to go get gas. <laughs> and a guy... Uh, That's another good story. ...actually helped him, which was... Well, so first of all, I... Yes, the gas gauge is out. So but those whoever reason, stole it. The only reason I didn't fix the gas gauge is because it was almost sixteen hundred dollars to fix where the sensor was in there, and I thought that was ridiculous. So out of principle, I wasn't going to pay sixteen hundred dollars for a hundred dollar part. That but was you stupid. ran out of gas like three times. We don't need to talk about why I am doing that, but I was putting my tachometer on, and I would forget what the mileage was, and then all of a sudden. My ADD brain, I'm like out of gas. So we're we're actually Avery's driving. Avery's driving. I'm in the passenger seat. I'm on a conference call, and she's the, the truck starts to shimmy, and we're in the middle of I-45, and she's like, Dad, what's going on? I'm like, crap. I didn't tell her what was going on. I was like, hey, I need you to just kind of merge over to the shoulder. Everything's going to be okay. And so she merges over, gets on the shoulder, stops the truck. I get in, and I get it down about another two miles down the road. And she's like, what is going on? I was like, babe, we're out of gas. She goes, oh, my God, Dad, are you serious? And so I get it down to the road. We're on the shoulder, and I have... 0.5 miles away from the Chevron, right there between um, Woodlands Parkway and 1488. And it's raining. I'm on a conference call, and we're headed to Waco's to watch Evan's playoff game. I was like, screw it. I said, lock the door. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. And so I just start walking on my conference call, and I say a little prayer. I was like, God, I don't know what's going on. Whatever I've done, I'm sorry, but if you could help me out here, this would be great. And like two minutes later, this Ford truck pulls up, Rolls down his window and this guy, hey man, what's going on? What we gotta do? Get you back on the road. <laughs> I'm like, hey man, uh, I'm I'm out of fuel. He goes, oh man, that's easy, brother. We get it, get in right here. The gas station's right up here. Come on, we'll get Thank you taken care. Thank God you didn't get murdered. And I and I and I hop in, 
guy's got KSPJ on the radio, listening to Christian music. And he's like, man, he goes, I, I don't, I, I, my wife didn't want me to come and pick you up, but I felt like you were good people. And, you know, I do this, I do this a lot. My wife gets mad at me, but uh, you look like a good person and you were driving a Ford. And I always want to know why Fords break down. And, so, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, man, I appreciate you, dude. He goes, well, how's your day going? I said, like, it's a whole lot better now that you're here. I was like, what's your name? He goes, it's Guzman. But my friends call me Goose. Where did he say that he worked again? <laughs> oh, man, he worked at Moon Valley um, off of, uh, uh, well, right there off of 1488. And he was coming home from work. He normally doesn't get off until 430, but he ended up getting off early and was going to come home and surprise his wife. And that's when he saw me walking on the side of the road and he called her and was like, hey, I need to pick this guy up. I think it's I think he needs some help. And she's like, no, don't do it. And then up, we go and get gas and I finish up my conference call. Um, they never knew anything that was going on. And um, I got him on mute the whole time. And I uh, finished that thing up, and then he took me to go get diesel, and we had to swing around. As we were swinging around, we called you. And the first thing you said was, well, what are you doing picking up my husband on the side of the road? Don't you know that's dangerous? <laughs> and Crazy. he's like, yeah, my wife is saying the same thing. So it turns out the guy's been a um, – uh, he, he leads a men's Bible study for the last 20 years. Uh, he's a retired veteran, um, just an absolute – amazing guy all the way around. He was 49 years old. He, he started his life over with the two-year-old. Um, wow. And, you know, he has a 20-year-old daughter. And we, in the 20 minutes we were together, we, he shared his whole life. And, uh, but it was, it was such a blessing because, you know, you, you say a prayer up and then all of a sudden it gets answered like that. And it's a guy that, you know, teaches Bible studies and listens to KSPJ. And right after you send a prayer, you got to think that prayers work. And yeah. it was pretty, it was pretty powerful. So that, that pushed us about 45 minutes late and we were late to Evan's game, but that started off our weekend. Yeah. Running out of gas. It's pretty cool. Well, we're thankful for Guzman at Moon Valley off 1488. Thank you, Goose. That's right. Okay. So gratitude. All right. We're actually talking about gratitude on our, um, on our guided hike this weekend on Saturday. Oh yeah. That's so this is the perfect month to talk about gratitude because Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, uh, thankfulness. And you just come up with that. <laughs> Listen, so I want to tell the definition of gratitude. Gratitude is a positive state of being, a feeling of thankfulness and appreciation for someone or something. Gratitude is both a state and a trait. So hmm. it's a state of being. But it's also a trait, so that means that it's a quality within someone uh, or a characteristic about someone. So some people just are always about gratitude. They always express gratitude. They're just always thankful. And I, I think that's uh, commendable, and it's a, a practice that it, it takes. Like if you say, I want to be a joyful person, then that becomes your trait, that you're joyful. It's something that you have to practice. And same thing with gratitude. You have to practice it because – in a world full of uh, having your wave runners and your truck stolen and running out of gas and all the things happening, it's easy to just really spiral down. And when you can practice that gratitude and it becomes a part of your trait, then it's now a state of your being. So you, you, everything that eludes you is a, a gratitude uh, state. So that means that you're going to have all the attributes of it. So that would be uh, having a happiness that lasts for days and years. Um, it is it actually helps improve physical health. So someone who has physical health has gratitude. It helps facilitate better sleep, um, facilitate facilitates better social well-being. It helps you in your life and your career goals. It also helps strengthen self-control mm -hmm. and improves your mental health. So if you need the motivation to practice more gratitude in your life, there's plenty of resources online, and hopefully that will be your motivation on why you want to do it. So why you want to do it is all those things that I just mentioned about happiness and physical health, sleep, all those things. So um, – I also want to say that gratitude is the quality of being thankfulness. It's readiness to show appreciation 
for and to return kindness. And I think that just by you running out of gas and the situation that you were in, you showed appreciation for Guzman? Goose. Oh, Goose. You showed appreciation for Goose. And Goose had to have had been thankful in his own life and had uh, gratitude as part of his trait in order for him to show that kindness to you. Because otherwise he would have just drove past you and he would have been like pissed off. Like all the other off. hundreds of people well, did. Yeah. Oh, or sucks he, for that dude. <laughs> yeah. Or what an idiot. <laughs> you know, they could have had any, like, what an idiot. Oh, sh- that guy's probably on drugs. Like, I mean, Jeez. who knows? <laughs> people just like think about how He's our probably minds... a murderer. I'm not going to pick him up. Exactly. But well, he, I mean, listen, those are real things though. It is real. That, that's where it's like, you really don't know. So it was a risk in him picking me up and it was, was a risk of me going with him. But I mean. You can kind of figure that out. Um, no, I, I think, you know, there's a couple couple of cornerstone men in my life that I, I, I talk to all the time, and one of them had told me um, this week, he was like, you know, the easiest way to, to describe it is, you know, most people say I have to do something or I need to do something, when in reality, you, you need to look at it as you get to. You get to to be here today. You get to go to work. You get to go to your kids' games. You get to go do anything that you are choosing to do. And that's the blessing is you get to go do it, not you have to. And if you can have that attitude of it's it's a blessing to be able to do any of it, um, it makes it a lot easier. That's what we talked about whenever you were saying, I think I'm going to have to go work in my company again and doing things that you've already done but they got you to where you are now, but you have to go back and do them again. Not You don't have to. It's by choice. It's for betterment of the company. But at first, you were you had a bit of a negative feeling about it. And I said, but how, what a, like, what a blessing it is to be able, did I just burp on the mic? It totally went up. Can you write down that time? That was awesome. Can we keep <laughs> it that? It came up. Um <laughs> But having the attitude of thankfulness that you actually have a company to work in and your very work not only benefits the betterment of the company, but ultimately you. So rather, there's many people out there that have to, uh, they're running their company and they're they're pursuing their dreams, but it's just slow right now for everyone. And then they have to go get a second job that's not even a part of their own company. It's building something for someone else. No, I, I don't have any concerns or, or, or issues with where we're at and what we're doing. I think it's all a blessing to have what we have. Um, so, so if you look at a vibrational, uh, emotional scale chart, there's basically, um, you think of like someone spiraling down versus someone who's uplifted and elated. There are emotions that are attached to being at the uh, spiraled down the descending and nobody ever says like, man, I'm feeling so down and happy and joyful right now. <laughs> it, people, it, 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 you just, you naturally don't say that because the two don't go hand in hand. It's very difficult to say, I am feeling so guilty right now, but I'm very happy and I'm so radiant. <laughs> it, it just does not go. They're two complete opposites. So, When you are in the state of feeling negative and down, a lot of those emotions are overwhelm, fear, um, victimhood, shame, low self-esteem, unworthiness, uh, guilt, irritation, negative self-talk, worry, depression, anger, jealousy, all these things, uh, frustration, all these things uh, pull down. And if you focus on the other side of that, the positive, the spiral up, the the highest or one of the highest emotions that you can have would be gratitude. So you reach up for gratitude and you reach up for thankfulness in your life. Suddenly, the other emotions that you're also trying to reach of joy and, and love and peace and hopefulness and calmness, optimism, courage, uh, humility, trust, abundance, compassion, all these things. Any more in there? Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly all of these things are falling underneath gratitude. It's like a you you like knock a over a domino. Yeah. It all it all starts to 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 call out all the good things. This week was 
a really rough week as I was hit with some very, very sad news. Um, my childhood friend and college roommate uh, passed away on Sunday, and she was only 42 years old. Her name's Brandy Townsend, and she went to sleep, and she just didn't wake up. And I think the hard part about this is is that there are no answers. We nobody knows until the autopsy comes back, which you know could take a long time. You just it depends on the county, but nobody knows why she why she passed away. And when you don't know, you and you're left in the dark like that, it's really hard to understand. And if you can't understand something, you can't accept it. And I've chosen in this situation to really just focus on gratitude um, because I'm I'm very grateful for the impact that she had on my life. Um, she was when it, when I when we moved to April Sound uh, Montgomery and when I was in fifth grade, it was really hard to move as a fifth grader. Um, I had just become crosswalk control uh, crosswalk <laughs> patrol. I was super excited about that. Equity. Yeah. And um, Brandy was one of the nicest people that I originally met in fifth grade. And she let me borrow her black and white polka dot skirt. Ooh. And nobody had ever let me borrow clothes before. You like, were in a black and white polka dot skirt when I met you. Uh, Yeah, I was. Definitely wasn't the same one. But. No, it wasn't the same one. Hers was like white with black polka dots. And yeah. was yours was, or the one I had on was black and white polka dots. And by the way, you know, Brandy was with me when I met you too. That her. night? Yeah, Brandy was. Yeah, I remember I remember going to her house in Montgomery when we were dating and we were in that F one fifty of mine. Mm -hmm. And when we left her house, it was raining. Yeah. And I think you put on it was the Pina Colada song, Dancing in the Rain or whatever. That's not Which one is it? You know what I'm talking about? There's Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain. So was, that came on the radio or something. I don't know. But we ended up parking in the middle of the street and got out in the middle of the rain. It was on 149. It was on 149. And and we we danced, we got soaking wet. I think we we held kissed or whatever and then got back in the truck and it was like this little adventure. And that was the first time I ever met Brandy. Yeah. Was when we left her house that night. That mm -hmm. was pretty cool. Yeah. Um Brandy and I stayed friends and we were we were cheerleaders together in eighth grade. Um we stayed friends, and then we really got to be close uh, more in high school. And God, we, her laugh. Her I know. We were all laugh. around. We all hung out with the same people, so all of our trouble uh, was uh, – I definitely got in a lot of trouble with Brandy. <laughs> and, um, oh, man. Then we moved in together in college and lived together for two years. And, it, you know, it was Brandy who taught me oh, how geez. to clean a bathtub. Really? Yeah, she did. Brandy taught me how to clean the bathtub. So you do know how to do it. It's been a while since I lived with Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> but Brandy taught me how to clean the bathtub. Um, she loved the pine saw. And I remember her with the uh, one of those green scouring pads. And then she was like, here's what you do. You put a little bit of hot water in the bathtub, put the plug in, put some of the pine saw in, and then you just start scrubbing the whole shower. And then, and then you rinse it all off. And I remember one time I was in the kitchen cleaning. Uh, at least I thought it was cleaning, and I swept the floors, and I went to go do what I always did, which was sweep all the crumbs underneath the fridge. Like, I thought that's what you do. Amy Marie. I thought that's what you did. Yeah. I. I so I, I remember Brandy, got, her mouth <laughs> dropped. She goes, what are you doing? And I said, what? I said, I'm, I'm cleaning. And she goes, no, you have to get a dustpan. And and then so I get the dustpan and oh, that's so we good. put that in the trash and then I go get a spray bottle like a Windex and I just go to spray the floor and then wipe it up with a towel and with your foot you just put the, you spray the floor oh my god and then Brandy goes what are you doing <laughs> and I go I'm cleaning the floors she goes no that's not how you clean the floors you have to get a mop and you have to get some hot water <laughs> and put some cleaning <laughs> supply in there. So she taught me how to uh, how, how, how to clean the floor. This is 18, 19 years old. Yeah, yeah. God, thank you, Brandy. I for know conditioning her for the real world. I know. So um, yeah, we had so much fun living together, and 
there's so many stories that I, I cannot share online mm -hmm. uh, here. Um, but, <laughs> you know, the whole reason that we have our Mexican cups with the with the glass with the blue rim on that <laughs> is because that's what that's what Brandy and I had and we had uh, I have a version of it but um, I've sent her a few pictures over the years of some pieces that I I still have from when, when we lived, lived together, together yeah. yeah she had the most contagious laugh mm -hmm. and it was Infectious it smile. was so loud she used to get in so much trouble at school because she would laugh at everything and it was so <laughs> loud you, you don't know what she was laughing at but you were laughing with her because you were laughing at her laughing yeah she was she was hilarious she had such a amazing sense of humor and she was so sweet and so gentle and oh man um she was the first person that i ever learned about being gluten-free from because she found out she had celiac and she she cut out the gluten and uh, it completely cut down on her allergies. It cut down on her inflammation. She lost probably like 10 pounds, like just inflammation just gone just by cutting out the gluten. So um, so sad. She leaves behind a husband and kids too. Yep, her husband Aaron and uh, Finley and Everett, her baby's first and, uh, excuse me, kinder in second grade. So hmm. the what gives me hope and peace is to know that she is in heaven and she's just waiting on us, you know, that's, and, and I, and she has a, an incredible family and they are all surrounding her. And, um, I know that you, having an aunt is just an incredibly special thing and that helps, uh, especially children. So when the aunt's on the mom's side, like you, you can't get closer to the mother than an aunt or the grandmother. Agreed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, so, so this gratitude has really, it just made me think like, I, I'm so, I'm thankful for a life. Um, I'm thankful to be able to be in my children's life right now and to be here on earth what, and have you here and our, and our kids. And I still have my health and the family has their health. And those are things to be thankful for. And I would so much rather have some of the issues um, that life throws at us than one of us not be here and us be doing all those things alone. And that's Agreed. kind of something that um, came to me this week, just thinking about uh, losing Brandy so fast um, without any answers. And also another on another note, <sighs> this is why I can't stand social media sometimes. It's such a trick and it's a trap. And I kept up with Brandy through social media for many years. And that's basically how we've kept in contact. And it tied this over so that we never, it's like constantly having snacks and you never go get a meal. <laughs> because. Yeah, but we were talking about that the other day. If you're talking about gratitude, you have to be thankful for those opportunities to connect with her through that platform even though you look back on it now and you think it was a hinder it wasn't it was still an extension of y'all's relationship and it shared y'all's lives together you just life took over and you weren't able to get together in person so yeah, that's life did the take blessing. over and she moved up to midland and you know she was really busy and it's kids and family man. life i just wish you know i have regrets so i wish that i could just see her one more time, talk to her one more time. But I, you know, again, I can focus on that regret. I could put all my time and my energy and focus into that regret. Or I could express gratitude and think about all the ways that she had an impact on my life. And uh, many of the things that I do today is because of what Brandy taught me. And, you know, she was, she was there when you and I met. And, um, oh, there's so many things. So, um, this brings me to this next point, and then we got to end our podcast because we've been talking for a long time. But um, I want to say that this is something that I'm talking to myself for too. Okay, I am not, I'm not an expert in this, um, but this is just something that I've learned. We're about to hit a time where we're going to be around family, friends for the holidays, and um, the reality is is that they may not be here. For very much longer who knows it's it seems like a lot of as we get older more and more people are passing away um suddenly so it's just a, it's a part of life um when you are around your family if you have uh an issue 
uh, about something, then you're triggered um, and you basically have anger, anxiety, um, annoyed, uh, any, any of these things happen when you are around the family. There's many ways that you can handle it. You may be an aggressive type of person and you may instantly pounce and talk to that person immediately, call them out, maybe in front of everybody or even to the side. And I don't know that I necessarily agree with that type of pr approach. My thought is to actually just take a moment to just sit with it and think like, okay, I mean, it, sometimes there are blatant crappy things that family members say. And yes, in that moment, you can say, what did you mean by that? What did you mean when you say that? Or, hey, let's not do that. Let's not go there today. Yeah, those that's an instant reaction that's, I think, perfectly normal. But if you notice that there wasn't any particular situation um, or it's just little things and you're starting to get all these negative feelings inside, I really think that if we all just take took a moment to stop and if you have to excuse yourself, go to the bathroom, get your phone and get the notes out and do these acronyms, S-E-C-T-A-F, SECTAF. I made up what that word. What in the heck did you I, just it's, say? I made it up. S-E-C. SECTAF? T-A-F. SECTAF. I could see somebody. It's like, excuse me, mom. SECTAF. Go in the bathroom. SECTAF. SECTAF. Okay, so here's what, what this means. means. Here's what this means. S, what is this story that is in your head right now? Uh, that comes from uh, Brene Brown, uh, I believe, and it's or Sonia Baumhoff. Anyway, one of the two. It's literally saying, "What is the story in your head?" Like you are, there is a story that you are telling yourself. A situation happened, and you've got something in your mind that's a story that is your story. It may or may not be true. It doesn't matter. It's still a story that you're telling yourself, and it's building up in your mind. What's the next letter? Oh, you're rude. Right <laughs> That's really rude. I thought you were done with S. You you couldn't. You didn't even wait till I was finished. I thought you were finished. Okay, I will prompt the next That's one. That's the story in my head. I'm through my S. I'm beyond that. Okay, I'm the story in my head it. right now is that you are insecure about what I'm saying, and you're getting embarrassed for me, and now you have to talk. Oh, well, the story in my head is that you're just talking too much and I'm impatient. I want to know the next letter. Okay, so that's the S. Write it down, your story, in your phone or in a notebook. Okay, number two, identify the emotion that you're feeling. Mm. What is the emotion? And it could be many. It could be uh, hatred, uh, anxiety. It could be fear. It could be anything. Any of those negative emotions can come up when you get around certain family members. That's the E. C, where is that coming from? Where is that coming from? There had How to- How is that C? Coming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I thought you. you started with where is that coming well, from? Swataf? <laughs> that would have been C, what? Oh my God. S-E-C. Okay, C, oh coming. Gosh. Where is it coming from? Where is that coming from? Yeah, where is that emotion coming from? Because there is a place that it was coming from. A situation that you had as a child, a trauma, that could be uh, something that somebody else has put on you that they used to say to you years ago or whatever, and it's just bull crap. I mean, there could be many places of where that is coming from. It could be coming from the devil. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> What is the truth? That's T. Truth. T. There we go. What is the truth? All right. Yeah. <laughs> You've identified the story, the emotion, where it's coming from. Is it true or is it something Is that... it your truth or their truth? How do you determine truth? I don't know. You pray about it. All right. You pray about it. The truth. Is it the truth? Yes or no? Is it the absolute fact? Is that story... Am I doing all this in the restroom? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm good. <laughs> so I've told my mom, CPAP... <laughs> And I go to the restroom. Sectaf. <laughs> Sectaf. Sorry, I thought it was CPAP. Okay, Sectaf. So I got it. All right. Where's and that coming from? Hold what on, is... Mom. Septap. I got to go to the bathroom and I'm going to find my story. I'm going to... Avoid. Avoid. Some of the actions that possibly put you into this situation. Okay. <laughs> before. 
We're going to need to talk before you make up acronyms. <laughs> Listen, I have a lot of things going on. Okay. Keep going. This Let's is go. A. This is awesome. We're in A. This is my TED Talk. I love this. Is this going to be a TED Talk? Absolutely. Okay, A, avoid. What is it that you may need to do differently and avoid next time for you to not be put in this future or in this situation? Okay. There may be things, okay? You may be walking yourself into the trap. You you may be really irritated and and anxious that someone commented on your weight every single time at Thanksgiving, but you also say, "What do you think about my weight?" Right? So you may be saying that. I don't know. I'm just right. making this up. There you go. But you may be bringing on situations for yourself. You may be really upset that everybody's drunk but yet you're the one that's offering all the alcohol or encouraging it or maybe you're drunk yourself i don't know <laughs> what, what does the f mean the f <laughs> is forgiveness <laughs> sometimes you have to forgive forgive, forgive me Lord. the other person because it is your issue okay a lot of times the crap that goes on with families is if everybody just stopped and stopped pointing fingers and just looked at themselves and said what are the what am i going to do different i and i'm going to forgive this other person because it, it may not I, even I, I be can't, true i can't wait i can't wait we're going to be next week with your family and a situation's going to arise and i'm going to say excuse me <laughs> cpap i have to go to the restroom <laughs> That's an oxygen machine. Okay. It's sex tap. S E C S E C T A F. All right. I'm going to sex tap whatever it's called. Sectaf. Sectaf. Okay. I can't. I can't. I'm going to have a moment. Okay. We're going to go through this acronym in the restroom okay. together when your family annoys us. I'm a, We're going to be grateful for it. Okay. I have had to use this, though. I'm just telling you, and it does work. And I'm getting better at it because there I could have I could have done things very different and caused a lot more issue. Okay. So I have sectafted <laughs> <laughs> the story. What's the story in your head? What's the emotion? Where is this coming from? Is this the truth? What are you gonna do to avoid it next time and forgive? Sectaf. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. You could also brush it under the rug, and you'll just be angry okay. and anxious, which I've done that too. I'm more of the let's drink a little bit, eat a little bit, nap a little bit, and um, watch a little bit of football, and whoever has a problem with that, don't come to my home. <laughs> you like, you're a denial too. No. You could also talk to everyone else about it, except for that person, and just get madder and madder because you fed the emotion. I've also done that too. So Wow. Well, I'm a female. That's what we do. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just going to drink a little, eat a little, nap a little. Well, I'm a sec to have. Thanks y'all so much. <laughs> have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks for listening to another episode of According to the Castles with Amy and Trey. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. To stay up to date with the castles, follow Amy on Instagram at a